All right, so module 21 is um, it's, it's a short module. It's just uh, we're going to talk about some of the rules about how we can declare functions um, and how we can declare functions with the same name and still make that OK within the context of our program. So the, the concept is called overloading functions, and we need to know, you know why and why not some different types of um, some different strategies might not be applicable. Um, so this is covered in 6.7 in the textbook. Um, so w w understanding how we can declare multiple functions with the same name um, comes down to the difference between a function's name and what's called a function's signature. Um, so to, to backtrack a little bit, we've already dealt with you know, how can we declare variables and whether or not they can be of the same name as different variables in our program. So we know that we can only have one variable named, for instance, x, <coughs> in our program at the same scope. So scope for a variable is very important, right? And scope is defined by those curly braces. Um, so that would be within a function, within if statements, within a loop, something like that. Now the reason, be, reason this is, the reason you can't redeclare variables with the same name in the same scope is because the compiler needs to know which one you're talking about. Um, and at runtime, we need to know which variable you're talking about whenever we're going to use it. Um, so that would present a, a significant issue. We can certainly create different variables with the same name, x for instance, um, as long as they're in different scopes. So they could be in different functions. They could be parameter names in multiple functions. They could be local variables within multiple functions. Um, they could be declared as variables within if and else statements. And as long as it was not in the same scope within the same curly brace, um, that would be okay. So multiple variables of the same name is okay as long as they're in different scopes. Now for functions, functions are declared at what is called a global scope. Functions are not declared within other functions. There's no curly braces surrounding the declaration of functions when we've done so. Um, and so because of that, scope really doesn't help differentiate functions. So we need to understand, well, what makes it a collision? What, what will cause a conflict when we name functions? Um, so just like a variable, when, whenever we call, whenever we use a function, the compiler must be able to tell precisely which function we're talking about. Um, unlike variables, um, where when we use the variables, the only thing we really know about that variable is its name, um, we have a little bit more, the compiler itself has a little bit more to go on when we use a function. So for instance, we might do a C out statement with a max function call. Um, and if we, we use the max function call from the CMath library, um, there's actually many max function calls. Um, some take integers, some take doubles. Um, so the max function call, if I, if I call it with two integers, um, the compiler can go and find the max function call in CMath that accepts two integers and returns another integer. It'll know that because you've called it with integers. Likewise, it can find the correct function named max that accepts doubles. Um, so the parameters themselves are different in this context. The parameters themselves are of different types. So that's extra information. And that type, the type of the parameter, is going to be in considered part of the function's signature. The name and the function uh, and the parameters form the signature. Um, in addition, technically speaking, in, in the function signature, the return type is also considered part of that. Um, so when we think about the fully qualified function, when we create it, we declare it. The important points for the compiler is what's the return type, what's the name of the function, and what are the parameter types. In fact, for function signatures and from the compiler standpoint, it really doesn't care what your parameter names are at all. Um, and that will not help it in terms of figuring out which function to use when you actually call the function. Um, so two functions may have the same name as long as they either have a different number of parameters Right? So certainly I can have a function called max that accepts two integers and another function called max that accepts three integers. That's fine. And obviously when we call it, we're going to have to either pass two or we're going to pass three and the compiler will know which one we're talking about. Um, a different data type for at least one parameter will also qualify. So if I have two functions named you know, print me, 
one of them accepts an integer and it prints out the integer, and another one accepts a double and it prints out a double with a, some sort of precision and, and maybe in scientific notation, for instance. Um, that's okay because the two functions, even though they're named the same, when I call them, I'll either pass in an integer or I'll pass in a double, and the compiler can tell the difference. And the compiler will see, okay, you've called this function with an integer, so I'll use the function definition that a actually accepts an integer. Um, now, there's examples where this doesn't work, um, where we have to be a little bit more careful. The, the bottom line, and this is a little bit more of a, a fuzzy rule here, is that the compiler must be able to tell what function you're using. So if we go up above to this last um, slide, um, if it differs in the number of parameters, or if it differs in the data type of at least one parameter, it will probably be able to determine the difference, but that's not guaranteed necessarily. Um, so if we look at these two max number functions, they both return a double. One of them accepts an integer as the first parameter and a double as a second parameter. The other accepts a double and an int. Now if I was to call this with 5.0 and 6, um, the compiler would be just fine with this because it would look at that and say, okay, I need to find a function who accepts a double and an int this is the one that accepts a double and an int. If I passed it like this, the compiler would say, okay, well, do I have a function that accepts an int and a double? Yes, I do. Call this one. Now, obviously, it doesn't seem to make sense to have two functions like this necessarily. They're obviously going to do similar things, but that's not guaranteed, and the compiler doesn't, certainly doesn't know that that's true. Now, if we go back to our initial example though where they're both integers um, now the compiler doesn't actually have an exact match there's no such there's no exact function that accepts integers um, only now if I was to only have one option um, what I could do what the compiler would do is say well I need to call these with integers I only have a function that accepts an integer and a double but hey I can convert an integer to a double without losing any data so the compiler will actually choose to change this automatically, and it'll do so without even a warning, to make this 6.0. Um, at runtime, this will pass in as a flip, or a double, sorry. Now, because I have both, ha though, the compiler doesn't really know what to do. Um, the compiler will go through and will say, all right, well, I, I have two integers. And it'll look and it'll say, well, this one could match if I change this second parameter to a double. But it'll also see this and say, well, I could match five and, and turn that into a double to match this one. Because the compiler, the, the compiler does not necessarily know what to choose, there's an ambiguity here, um, the compiler will, will spit back an error. So while hard and fast rules are nice and thinking about a different number of parameters versus a different or, or a different data type for at least one parameter, it's nice to think of that as a strict rule. As long as you follow that rule, it'll be okay. There are exceptions, um, and it all boils down, it all comes down to, can the compiler completely, without understanding what you're trying to do, it certainly is not going to infer that max number probably is going to return the same thing in both cases. Unambiguously, from a machine's perspective, can the compiler guarantee that it's calling the right function? And it can't in this situation, so it's going to be a compiler error. Um, parameter names. Um, don't matter, as I mentioned before. And if we think about it, it that should hopefully make some sense. Um, remember, the rule is the compiler must know exactly what function you're trying to call. So if I call something, 3, 4, um, well, the compiler is going to look and say, well, do I, have a, do I know anything about a function that accepts two integers? Well, this one matches. That accepts two integers. And this one matches. That accepts two integers. Um, and by the way, this if I do this, and call it like that. Um, if 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 you think that'll change it, you want to you want to think more carefully about how parameters work. Um, the first two parameters that I'm calling something with, they're still integers. The fact that their names happen to be the same as up here does not tell the compiler that that's what you're looking for. Um, the compiler only sees the data types when it's really trying to look at this. Um, that's the only thing it can really do. Um, so this would be a compiler error as well because both of these functions functionally are, or, or practically are the exact same thing in terms of the compiler. The compiler has no idea which function you're talking about.
finally, the return type. Um, the return type is very problematic because, again, we don't, you know, even though that's technically part of the function signature, it actually very rarely, or in, in, in almost all cases, will not tell the compiler enough. It will not give the compiler any way of differentiating. And, and the main reason for that is that um, we don't really have the data type necessarily, or the return type doesn't necessarily have to show up in the function call. So if I have, uh, if I make a call to something here and I don't assign it anywhere, I just call it with three and four, um, well, these two functions are identical and I'm not even using the return value. So there's no way for the computer, to, there's no way from the compiler to say, well, they must have meant the one that returns in or the one that returns double. Same thing over here. I mean, whether this is returns an int or a double doesn't change anything, it'll still print out. Um, so return types don't allow you, different return types do not allow you to, to name functions the same with the same parameters. They're not a differentiator. Um, the return type itself does not help in terms of compilation. Um, if I needed two functions that accepted the same exact parameters and they were named the same thing, but they returned different types of data, I'd have to change the names and I'd have to name them something else, which typically is perfectly fine. Typically, that's not going to be an issue for you.